to the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast with Borg, Betts, and a baller. Welcome in. It's Wednesday, April 10th, and we're back. Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Borgannoni, and I am joined by Matthew Betts and Jason Moore. Mock draft today, boys. We got a, a big... How many weeks of the NFL draft? Three weeks? Two and a half weeks? I don't even know at this point. Oh, I'm already... Mayhem. I'm oh already coming in hot with the mayhem. Uh, I just wanted to interrupt you, Betts. Yeah, we're doing a mock draft. <laughs> a couple weeks away from uh, the NFL draft, where uh, after the first round of the NFL draft, the fantasy footballers will be on NFL Plus doing a cool... Uh, live show following the NFL draft. It's going to be a great collab with the NFL. Um, and today, mock draft, but not just a mock draft, mock draft. Mayhem. Why don't you explain that, Kyle? I will. And Jason, you you are someone who, you go beyond the tees. You want to just go there straight is no in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> just that's right. Hit it straight on. Um, I, I, I don't like tease. Lot- I just please. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? You're excited. And I'm excited, too, for when we get to do uh, the live show right after uh, NFL Draft. Really, like, in of round one, towards the end of round one. But the Mock Draft Mayhem Edition, we've never done this for a rookie draft. You guys started this last year on the main show to throw in some weird stuff, because in the summer, things get weird in a draft. But I think at this point in April, it's easy to kind of look at, this is where I'm slotted in, this is what's going to happen in a rookie draft, when weird things are going to happen because there's so much we don't know with draft capital and your league mates who they might be idiots. You know, if you're listening to this show, clearly smart person. Not an idiot. Yeah. Beautiful, handsome, gorgeous, so wise. Yes. Just, just the cream of the crop. That's who we have here. And so you might, you know, slot someone and say, Hey, they're going to, they need a tight end. They're going to take Brock Bowers, the one Oh six. And yet, you might be sitting there at the 107 and go, I did not see Brock Bowers getting to me. Do I, Should I draft him? What should I do? And so we're going to kind of give some scenarios today if things change in the NFL draft, if things change in your draft, and how we react. So we have a couple of mayhem-specific things. Mayhem. That, uh, that we'll throw out there. Now, there's some things that shouldn't change, right? We're not, we're not going to debate about Caleb Williams going to the Bears, but... Uh, once you get past the first couple of picks, there will be things that change. So let's get into some craziness in just a second. I did want to get your thoughts on a couple of prospects because right now our Dynasty Pass is about to have one more update. You know, one more update where we get the final comb through of the rookie rankings. Uh, Jason, I know that behind the scenes, there's been little things changing here and there. Always. Uh, but I wanted to ask this question because I, at this point in the process, I'm pretty, I feel pretty set in my convictions. But guys, is there a prospect you are most afraid that you'll be wrong on? Meaning, like, I, I could be dead wrong, and maybe just I'm giving you a chance to leave the door open to greatness, or this player just really, really sucks, and I was really wrong. Wrong. So, Jason, I'll let you start first, and then Bets can follow up. Yeah, I'll, I, I definitely have a player that I'm most afraid of, and it's, uh, it's Adonai Mitchell. And the reason I'm most afraid of being wrong is because I'm so out on Adonai Mitchell. There are plenty of people who like him. Uh, There are many, 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 especially post-combine mock drafts where Adonai Mitchell is a first-round pick at the end of the first round, so he's going to a good team. You know, oh, he's the 32nd pick to the Chiefs. He's going to the Bills. You know, great landing spot where I went back and I watched him because I've... I've, The numbers aren't, aren't great. His touchdowns are outstanding and everything else basically sucks. Uh, statistically, analytically, the film people talk about is great. I did not think that like I watched film before looking at the analytics. Uh, I try to, I try to have some kind of opinion and then I go in and dig a little deeper and then I go back to the film and my process was like, ah, I, I thought he quit on routes. He wasn't, I don't think he had the the best hands. I don't think he tracked the ball super great. I mean, there's there's a play here or there where he did. Um, so I didn't love him. Then I go look at the analytics, and he's bad. And then I start seeing, like, the, and this is, you know, a month, months ago. Um, and then I'm like, 
wait, he's supposed to be a first rounder? Like, this guy doesn't have a first round grade to me. Then he runs, you know, the so fast at the combine. What was he, like four, three, six or something? Um, as a big boy. And that's going to run your way into the first round of the NFL draft. And so I went back, I watched more film today because I'm because of this question, because it's like, who are you afraid of being wrong on? And if it hits, it could hit really, really well for Adonai Mitchell. If you want to be in on him and he is a back of the first round draft pick, you can see the, the path being a touchdown machine in college. Maybe he is used around the goal line as a bigger, uh, quick guy. He's obviously got the long bomb touchdowns over the top profile as well so there's ways it could work out i'm afraid of being wrong but i won't like i won't have any shares of him just because of where he is in most average draft positions versus where i value him he'll always be gone by the time i'm willing to take him and so i hope i'm not wrong because that would suck and i don't mean that my opinion was wrong it was just personally on my fantasy leagues I, you know i want the points i want to make good picks and so it's purely sh selfish. Is it is it tough because Andy's on the opposite end of the spectrum? Where like even when we were doing, you guys were doing the prospect previews last week on the main show, it was like Andy was seeing different things on film. You know, he was seeing like, oh, I, I see this guy being like a true alpha, and you're like, I just yeah, it was like a yards after catch, a tackle breaker. I'm like, I don't remember him breaking a tackle like ever. Like, you know, he runs away from you know if he's if he gets uh, yards after catch. And he's open. He's very fast. You're not going to catch him. But I don't remember him being like a – I mean, that's what's funny about film. You can have two people watch. Like, for instance, Mike and I, same day we're watching Will Shipley. Um, and, you know, we're watching some of the same games. And we just, we just saw things differently because film is very – subjective and it's it's worth noting like that's why we try to be both film and analytics because people can watch the exact same thing and come away with different takeaways when you look at the analytics and you say well he hit this miles per hour that's not it's not a subjective opinion it's like this this is how fast he was on this play not oh i think he was slow there or i think he was fast so we try to have both but uh film film's wild like that you i mean what's your mood you know what I mean? Like I'm in a bad mood when I'm watching at night Mitchell. It's like, well, uh, you know, I'm, maybe I'm just negative. That's why I try to go back and rewatch guys sometimes, but I'm still out. I mean, it's going to be tough when he goes to Buffalo, right? <laughs> that's that's the it thing will, that everyone, everyone mocks right now. So thank you very much, Buffalo for that. And the, uh, the Steph Diggs trade. And I will say film is pretty subjective except for Xavier worthy being fast, which, which Kyle thinks it's subjective. <laughs> <laughs> it's not subjective. Um, the guy that I'm a little bit worried about being wrong on, and I will say my my answer came in, I was like, oh, it's going to be Xavier Leggett, but we've talked about that at length on this show. So I think we're all kind of like, we don't know what to think, and I'm scared to be right or wrong one way or the other. But the real answer for me, and maybe this just goes back to like recency bias, is Drake May. And on it. the episode where pick. we did the quarterback preview, which was just Kyle and I on that one. So Jason, if you want to share your thoughts, Kyle and I like, we're both in on Drake May. Like, I think he's a pretty good prospect. He runs around the goal lines. So the touchdown rushing equity is there. He throws deep, which we like for fantasy. And as soon as the college season ended, a lot of people like Drake May. But now, as the weeks go by, we have nothing to talk about. All I hear and see on social media is people nitpicking Drake May's game. And I can't help but get CJ Stroud 2.0 vibes here, where it's like, you look back a year from now, and you're like, oh, that guy was actually really good. But that's how I see it. The NFL maybe is not feeling the same way. And so if he does fall a little bit in the draft, and I don't think anyone's projecting that, but just I have this kind of doubt in the back of my mind of like, what does everyone else see that I'm missing? Because I still don't think he's a really good prospect. I I get the erratic moments that he has on film. And sometimes he holds on the ball, tries to make a play, and he kind of had to do that based on the game plan. He changed offensive coordinators. We talked about that. Uh, that was a big deal in terms of difference of scheme. But yeah, you and I were very high on Drake May on that episode. Um, I yeah, I I really want him to. I, I think he should go number two. Now that that's different than saying this should happen or will happen. But I, if I were picking, I would pick him number two behind Caleb Williams. Yeah, um, I I like Drake May. I think he's got a lot. Like if I was a general manager, I think that's what you mean, right, yes, Kyle? Yeah. Like if you are actually putting together an NFL franchise. 
Drake May checks so many of the boxes. I I do think his decision making is a little bit sporadic, but he's got the prototypical size and strength which you want. And sometimes that becomes over inflated to general managers in the NFL and you end up with just like, well, this is a big, tall, strong guy, so I'm going to take him in the top 5 when he's really like a second round grade of a, you know, he's not accurate. He he wasn't uh, didn't have great production, but this guy's like, he, he checks all the boxes in the sense that he is big, strong, athletic. He is very young. That's one of the things I love about, you know, you see some of the mistakes, some of the uh, erratic play and you go, well, the, the, it's a kid, you know, these other guys, um, took many more years to get to the point, you know, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, uh, Michael Penix. These are, they're several years older and it took them more time to figure it out. So I, I do like Drake May. I don't think he's a flawless prospect. I see how he could flame out. Um, but if I was an NFL GM, I'm, I'm with you, Kyle. I would want a guy who can make every throw easily, who is young, who was prolific with production, who comes from, you know, I, I like guys that are from a lineage of athletes. You know, this sports, athleticism, competition, uh, the way they take care of their bodies, the way they train, their work habits, like that. I like that, and and he's from that. So I, I would take Drake May number two as well. I'm going to throw out a name that I just don't know what to do with this player, and it's Braylon Allen, running back from Wisconsin. There's metrics all over the board that you could argue with him, like his rush success rate, second best in this class, and yet when you look at the explosive plays, they didn't happen that much. It was right under 3%. I've always kind of had a bias against certain big 10 running backs who just get a ton of volume and a ton of carries where his rush share actually went down over the years. He did catch 28 passes this past past year, but he's not like a fluid, uh, like that's going to be his calling card in the next level. If there's a team that falls in love with him, I think Jason made this argument that just like this guy's different. He's young, he's massive and we can use him. That's awesome. But he could go somewhere and be like the RB4 or 5 off the board. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's say he goes somewhere and is like the backup A.J. Dillon style. And you're like, ah, this isn't really what I want. So everything is there from age, size, production that should say, I love Braylon Allen. And yet, I don't know, he'd just be a middling pick at RB that we kind of see. Like if he goes in round three or let's say he goes round four, we're going to be like, oh, man, this is this is not good territory he, he lands somewhere like like Roshan last year, where you're like, oh, I could see it. I could see it work. He's a bigger back, and yet he's kind of stuck, and now the team doesn't care about him as much. So I don't know. I'm interested where he ends up in our mock draft because I think he belongs in the first two rounds of a one-quarterback draft, but I don't know, Betts. What do you think? Like I, I, I could see him, a team falling in love. He could be the number one running back, or he could be the fifth or sixth off the board. I think you could say that about almost every running back in this class, truthfully. I, I mean, I think... We all agree, like, Benson's probably one of the top two or three off the board. I'd be shocked if he falls uh, quite a bit. But the running back class is not strong, period, right, for the NFL draft purposes. And so, yeah, if two or three of these guys fall to, like, the fourth and fifth round, no one should be surprised by that. Who is it going to be? I have no idea. And that's the tricky part with this running back class is that there is no locked-in stud that's going to definitely get top 50 draft capital. We might get one in round two. We might get two. But, like, I would be shocked if there's three, right? So... A lot of these prospects will have holes in their profile. I will say on Braylon Allen, though, a lot of people that do like prospect modeling love this guy. And it's because yeah. he produced early and he was so young when he did it. So like if you bet on those kind of profiles, generally it works out. This could be different, of course, if he falls to you know fourth or fifth round. Then you have a lot more concern about how long he is given a chance to even be an RB1 in this league. I have to believe that you know, I'm not a Devi player. I'm not playing college fantasy football um i didn't know who braylon allen was three years ago i just don't care um that's uh, you know i've got a different occupation football related um three years ago if you were in on college fantasy football and you're playing devi i can't imagine what a perfect prospect braylon allen looks like as a 17 year old boy man to come out and rush for over a thousand yards and dominate when he was brought in to play defense 
And they're like, let's run you a running back. And then, oh, my goodness, this little boy's just destroying everybody. It seems like that's that's as good a prospect as you could ever have when you've got a 235-plus-pound newborn baby dominating. But then he just really never – you expected, like most college players, like the, him to elevate his game and take a step forward the next year and the next year. He never really did. It's just more of the same, and it wasn't bad. And he's still obviously very young. He's going to play his entire rookie season at 20 years old, which I don't think we've ever seen before. Um, I think he graduated high school a year early. So he did. Uh, I mean, he's he's a very interesting prospect, and I agree with you, Kyle. Like, if he goes in the fourth round or later, which right now I would say it's just a complete 50-50 shot as to whether he's a third round pick or a fourth round pick, and to me it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, that's like the split whether you know it's the days of the draft if he's a day two pick I'm in if he's a day three pick I'm pretty much out because I'm gonna let the NFL tell me what the NFL thinks about this prospect and and if you're, you're saying to yourself like oh man no Braylon Allen's gonna be there like at this point last year just to give you some numbers Isaiah Spiller or two years ago Isaiah Spiller was seen as a first round pick in rookie drafts because everyone's like oh this will be you know second or third running back like he was a fourth round pick and he dropped but at this point in the process we were all seeing these kind of players same thing last year was chase brown sean tucker and sean tucker falls you know for medical reasons but like out of the draft there is a wide range of outcomes for certain players and when you're drafting right now everything feels so set we know what it is we've been drafting for a couple of months guys zach evans was a top 18 mm -hmm. pick in rookie drafts at this point last year yeah, I mean, he was a five-star recruit, number one running back out of high school, and sometimes people latch on to those things too much. You have to let the NFL inform you after the draft. You can't hold on to your pre-NFL draft uh, locks. You know, you you can't get take lock like that. For sure. So if you want to get our post-draft picks, which those will be updated very soon, like we said, we'll do a live show on NFL Plus, and then the post-draft update will happen with the 2024 dynasty pass if you want to go to udkplus.com all of those rankings everything will be updated for your rookie drafts but if you're here you're here to mock draft the fantasy footballers mock draft i'm pretty sure that this show might set a record for the most number of drops used on the dynasty podcast just between you know mayhem drop Every once in a while, I'm going to say something like Maka Laka Ding Dong. <laughs> Just whatever it is. Um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good about it. But we want to introduce a little bit of mayhem, a little bit of anarchy here when we're doing the draft because you've probably done some practice ones. If you want to look in the Dynasty Pass, we have a post combine rookie draft. But just a reminder things can change. La uh, a couple years ago, we gave this example for Mike. Uh, post combine. CH was the RB4. Then he gets drafted by the Chiefs and he gets boosted all the way to the 101 or the 102. So things can change. I looked back, Jason, and, and I messaged bets about this. But Malik Willis, at this point of the year in early April, was seen as a top three super flex pick. Yeah, I mean, he was supposed to be uh, certainly like a top 15 NFL draft pick. He was uh, a mobile athlete and through this process about this these next couple weeks it started to be like i just don't think he's a good quarterback and that matters and the nfl thought he's not a good quarterback and then they didn't draft him high and then it turns out not a good quarterback it there's so much that can change within two to three weeks and it we don't just throw out everything you know part of the process was actually what do i see on film what do i see you know when i look at the analytics numbers and we compare the historical numbers we talked about all those things so if you want to go back, we have a rookie draft tips and tricks episode a couple episodes ago. That would be helpful just for you to stay water and not just completely throw everything out the door. But things change. I mean, Kayshawn Boutte for a long time was kind of seen as a first round rookie pick until we got to post combine. And then, you know, NFL draft, it's like, does this guy even, is he going to be in the league two years from now? No, no, he's going to be gone. Uh, so let's explain some mayhem rules and then we'll jump into this draft. But after one of us makes a pick, we're going to give our rationale. We're going to give the upside case, right? When you do a mock draft, you're trying to give the, here's what's going to go right. 
Well, if one of one of us, one of the other drafters says, you know what, I, I, I don't like that, or I could see things change a little bit, they can introduce a little bit of mayhem. Mayhem. But I, I need us to give either a landing spot that's less than ideal, or maybe there's another player at this position that gets drafted before them. So, you know, if, if somebody got drafted, God forbid, you know, Brock Bowers is going to be the first tight end. But if somebody went before him, you'd be like, oh, what, what do I do here? So we're going to give wide receivers and running backs that might be drafted before. And maybe we'll see if you guys can stick to your guns or uh, change the pick. So the order will be myself. Vince, oh, how nice. Give your, you're giving yourself the first pick. Randomly Coward. generated. Yeah, just, sure, just I just randomly put this together. Uh, just to see uh, what would what would go on, and so you know, if you guys want to put some mayhem in, it's fine. It's really really fine. Uh, I personally have the 101 in a one quarterback draft, which is what this is. Last time we did superflex, this time's first quarterback. But at this point, I will be taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, with the 101, and I'm not sure if there's really anything there's you no, guys can do about it. There's no mayhem that would that would affect this. I mean, you you could you could push mayhem. And say because th- this has been talked about before. I don't think we're, we'll we'll use up our mayhem at the first Correct. pick. But if he goes to the Patriots, which sometimes is mocked and won't happen, but could technically happen. That's not completely unrealistic. Would that switch it up? You know, like like if neighbors went to the Cardinals at four ahead of him. No, and but oh. Harrison went ahead to the Patriots. At that point, where are you sticking to your guns? You know what? I'm doing I don't care. Oh, I'm doing it. I, yeah. Mayhem. <laughs> we get to make the rules. That's what happened. That's what happened. Marvin Harrison oh my God. goes to the Patriots, and Malik Neighbors goes to the Cardinals, which is not completely unrealistic. Uh want to remind people, just like you talked about um, this time last year, quarterbacks, there's there's usually some quarterbacks that end up falling in the draft. Um, I guess that was two years ago. Well, last year was Banana Rama. Banana Rama was talked about as a top five pick, and then he Will falls Levis. out. Will Levis, yes, <laughs> Will Levis, <laughs> aka Banana Rama, was at this point last year was like a top five pick. Is he going to go to the Seahawks? Is he? And then he falls out of the first round. So, like, if Jaden Daniels or Drake May end up falling, and Marvin Harrison goes to the Patriots, things go this way. So. Marvin Harrison is a Patriot. Malik Neighbors is a Cardinal. Which one are you drafting? It is a worthy question, Jason. And I am going to ponder it because we're going to take a short break. And I've thought about it. I I took a long time to think about this, Jason. And on the Rookie Draft Tips and Tricks episode, I talked about how landing spot for wide receiver should not matter nearly as much. We kind of double count it sometimes. And so I think to me, I'm just going to take a player that I think is, it's hard to poke holes in this player being a, you know, eight, 10 year pro where it just doesn't work out apart from injury. Uh, So yeah, I I would still take Marvin Harrison there at the 101. I could see the argument though. I'm not saying it's like out of the question. I do have a team with Kyler on it. So I would be interested in getting a stack but I've kind of yeah. But this on. is this is in a vacuum. I will say, like we, you know, this isn't just some random wonky uh, FM radio, tr- you know, uh, style gimmick. I offered um, in in our Dino Junior League, um, or no, our our main Dynasty League. I apologize. I offered Brees Hall for your guys' one hundred and one, and I've done that twice in the past. And I was worried at one point. Of this exact scenario, this was my biggest fear was if Marvin Harrison went to the Patriots, would I really want him above Brees Hall? And so we kind of hemmed and hawed, but it was, it's a scary prospect. Just don't let it happen. Come on, Patriots. Don't do that. Yeah. All right, Betsy. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it go- going here. Hopefully no one throws mayhem my way because I'm going to take Malik Neighbors and just take the chalk pick. Um, I mean... It seems very unlikely he falls out of the top 10. A lot of mocks have him going to like the Giants or, you know, the Chargers or something like that if they stand, stand pat and don't trade down. But either way, like Kyle said, 
not too concerned with landing spot. You bet on talent. His prospect profile is awesome. All right, and I, um, I'm going to keep us rolling through these top three picks then. Roma Dunze should be the third pick here in a single quarterback league. You've got the wide receivers of the most valuable position. You've got a big three. And in the NFL draft, these three will be the first three drafted. Um, it, it, the, you know, like I said, maybe the order of the landing spots change, but it this is how most drafts will start, will be Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, if it's a single quarterback league. Yes. And Betts and I have talked about this, and we'll be talking about in the DFS and betting podcast of, for a while, it was, it's Chicago, we know it is. And now it's it's like, no, 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 like that that can be exposed as he's he's not a guarantee to go to that team. There's other teams around there that are kind of interesting. Like if he went to the Jets at 10 or he went to Denver, uh, if they wanted to go that route, like it would be a, maybe a worse landing spot. But I, I don't think I can poke holes in saying, is he deserving of being the third guy off the board? But at the four spot, I think... There is some oh, scary things it here. It gets wild now. So uh, at the fourth spot, I'm really only debating between two guys, and I wanted to make that known. And, I, and It's Brian Thomas Jr. or Caleb Williams. And I would take Caleb Williams as high as – I'd take him at five. That's what I did on my little – this little exercise where behind the scenes where I was like, I would take Caleb Williams there, and I'd feel good on it. And I've kind of grown from – I don't know if this is going to work to he's just in a really good spot. And it's hard to say for a number one pick, like he's, he's just blessed with the best weapons, possibly the best wide receiver of a generation, you know? Uh, so this is a Keenan Allen take. Sure. <laughs> I, I didn't say it, but um, I'm going to take Brian Thomas Jr. here because I think he will be the fourth wide receiver drafted off the board. That could go as early as like top 15. Like I could see him going to new Orleans or I could see him, go later i think buffalo feels really really far to drop that far down so anybody want to poke holes in him or or, or give some other thoughts before i pencil in he, he certainly seems to be the the consensus fourth wide receiver taken the expectation is he will be the fourth guy off the board um on the 25th of april so w whether that is you know if if he goes to buffalo it will be a trade up to get him, so you, I yes. think people will be all in on on Brian Thomas because he's not. I don't think he gets to Buffalo's pick, um, so I don't think there's an easy way to poke a hole in that. There, you, you could poke a hole simply in the yellow flags you see in him as a prospect, being a one year hit, being a guy that got the advantage of playing across from Malik Neighbors, uh, being a, a basket catch um guy when you know not the style of catching that you want and then you compare that to Caleb Williams and say Caleb Williams is a much much to me safer draft pick than Brian Thomas Jr. But if they both hit I'd rather have a wide receiver. For sure. And we we mentioned the targets per out run is really low for a final year and only one year of production. So there there are some holes but I think the NFL views him as a as a you know, top 20 type player. So bets you're up. Right. At this pick, I'm not considering Caleb Williams, which is, wow. I don't know if that's not, you know, off consensus or what, but one Oh five in a one QB league, there's still difference makers on this, on this board to me. And I think Brock Bowers is one of those guys. We've talked a lot about rookie tight ends and yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. I don't think we should react to last year's class one way or the other. I just think, People have been talking about Brock Bowers for years as like, this is the prospect and he's great. And a lot of people say he's a top 10 prospect in this class, top 15 at worst. So I think he's going to get he the draft gets to capital. Play with, he gets to play with Brock or uh, with Caleb Williams. So that, that'll that be really fun. You think so? Is that, is that the yeah. mayhem you're throwing at me? <laughs> no, no it's, it's not mayhem. It's just, you know, the, the chalk of Odunze um, there at nine. That's like what every mock draft has. Yeah, they brought in Keenan Allen. If they want to get him a pass catcher, Brock Bowers. I know that he's usually going in most mocks I've seen lately. Going to the Jets at ten. I don't see how the the Bears. I I I think they could they could grab him there at nine. I mean, hey, if he gets top ten draft capital, even better for his profile, which already is awesome. So, give me Brock Bowers. I can't argue against top ten. Let's say that he drops further. I'm not going to use my mayhem because I got some more up my sleeve, but 
let's say he drops like 16 below like 20 or 20th like does that does that lower him in your mind from being this like locked in top I, five guy I, I don't think it does um I, I mean obviously i didn't draft him top five and i wouldn't personally draft them draft I him would top never. five because Who i don't like do drafting Gosh. rookie tight ends but as far as his value whatever you think about him as a prospect going to you know, it's kind of like what you see with wide receivers. Sometimes it's it's good to go in the back half of the of the first round because you just end up on a better team, a better franchise, um, usually with a better quarterback. So he's a lock for a first round pick. I mean, if he gets to pick twenty, people will be shocked. He's not falling out of the first round. So I don't think there's anything that happens on the draft day that changes whatever anyone's outlook is of Brock Bowers. I I can't see a landing spot re that's realistic that makes you. Love him more or love him less? What if he went to, I, I saw he met with his team, so that's why I'm putting it up there, the Colts. That's fantastic. I would, I would, I, 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 that's a great landing spot. They, or the Bengals they want to utilize the tight end. to it, 18. So, yeah. any of those spots. All right, Jay. All right, I'm up. Um, to me, this is actually a pretty easy pick. Um, at this point in the draft, um, I'm, I'm happy that, uh, I'm happy that Brock Bowers was taken. I don't like drafting tight ends. Um, I've talked about that a lot on the main show and probably here. Uh, the, the overall hit rate of really being a true difference maker is just so low that I want a higher percentage odds. Um, even if the, the, you know, ceiling case might be better for Brock Bowers. Caleb Williams to me is a great prospect. He's going to have the number one draft pick capital which means he can fail and still have a job for a long time he's also coming into maybe the best position that any 101 nfl draft pick has ever come into on a winning franchise i, I mean they they weren't over 500 but they were certainly they have a better winning record than anyone uh, that's been drafting at the 101 because it was the panthers pick they've got weapons to throw the ball to so here i will i will take caleb williams that would have been my pick. At 107, I'm deciding between two guys, not knowing the information that I really need, which is NFL draft capital. Uh, so I think it's team dependent, it's need, but if I was shooting for upside, I think I would take Jaden Daniels right here mm. because I just want somebody who could break the league and break things with rushing. I do have concerns about if he goes to New England, how they're going to use him in this Alex Van Pelt play action passing game. It might be a little different if he goes to Washington. I just have concerns because it's Cliff Kingsbury. But regardless of the offensive coordinator, if I'm shooting for upset here, I think you you could get a difference maker at 107. And I'm fine with that in a one quarterback league. I, I get people wanting to wait, but I, I would take him here. I, I don't I don't blame you there. Uh, all the love we shared for Drake May there is something broken in fantasy football. It's one of my pet peeves. I wish we could freaking fix it. And I can't believe I'm still in the minority here. I can't believe that, like, I mean, I'm I'm on an island. Everyone disagrees with this take. But the fact that, that quarterback rushing is the stupid cheat code that it is, is just nonsense. Like, quarterbacks should – they. Sh I am a firm believer that all yards to a quarterback – should be the same. Not rushing 10 yards gets you a point, but it takes 25 passing yards to get a point. That's, I mean, I mean, Justin Fields is the perfect example of this. Justin Fields was so good for fantasy football and the NFL doesn't want him. They, he is a backup quarterback now because he's just not that good. And the guys that aren't that good probably shouldn't be the best players in fantasy or, uh, you know, up there. Um, so, uh, but that is how fantasy is scored. So I don't blame you at all for Jaden Daniels over, you know, you know, all these wide receivers. I think when it comes time for real drafts, you'll be taking a wide receiver here. You'll be taking the I one so. that went to the chiefs, the one that went to the bills, whatever great landing spot happens to hit first round draft capital at wide receiver. You t you'll take them over Jaden Daniels. Also, I don't worry about Cliff Kingsbury. Obviously Cliff Kingsbury had Kyler. And you could be disappointed in that maybe he could have got more out of Kyler, but Kyler was great for fantasy. When he's on the field, he's been good with Cliff Kingsbury. All right, Betts. This is the worst. 
<laughs> because there's so many guys that like I don't actually want, but you can't consume NFL draft content without seeing the names Xavier Worthy, who I like him as a prospect, and A.D. Mitchell in round one. And I'm probably going to follow the NFL draft capital. If those both go there, if they both go round one, I lean Worthy. If A.D. Mitchell goes in round one and the Bills move up for him, which the Bills, when they want a guy, they are willing you to love move him. up. I will keep my mind open, as Jason said, but I'm going to assume both guys go round one in this exercise, and I'm going to take Xavier Worthy. Interesting. Okay. I've, I, already, used, I've already used my my mayhem on Kyle. Jason's I've only got one now. left, so I'm <laughs> I'm going to hold off. I'm just giving Kyle a pause, a minute no, to No, no, think. no, no, no. I, I definitely, I just know that what Betts is going to use is if I use a mayhem here, he's just going to switch to A.D. Mitchell. He's just going to pick the Texas. Oh, and that would be Texas awful. Guy. We don't want we don't want A.D. Mitchell high. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so, so then I'm on the clock. So let me ask this question about Worthy. This is the highest you would take him. What's the lowest you could see him go in a rookie draft? Uh, let's say he gets like see. second round draft capital. I mean, yeah, if he goes in round two, which I think is, is still possible for sure, and it's someone like the Panthers or you know someone like that because the Panthers are taking a wide receiver. Um, and Lab McConkey sneaks into round one, which there's a little buzz on, or A.D. Mitchell does go to the Bills, like, or the Chiefs, you know, like, you really do have to kind of consider that. So I'd probably drop him down to like 110, 111, somewhere in that range. Okay. I had him at 112 in mind. So I have four other players I like more than Worthy. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm interested to see who that I is. I've, apparently I've hated him well, you don't uh, like for speed. a couple of months. Yep. All right, Jason. Well, Kyle doesn't even see the speed. Kyle says he's No, just... he couldn't see it. <laughs> oh, my um, God. All right, uh, for, for this is an easy pick for me, pre-NFL draft. I'm going to go with the heart wants what the heart wants. This was almost my answer for who are you afraid of being wrong on, and it's Troy Franklin because I love Troy Franklin, and I see ways that it goes wrong for sure because he's a skinny little beanpole who could drop in draft capital and, and fall out of the first round and maybe be a lower in second round pick. I don't know, um, but I think... Something is going to happen here after I select Troy Franklin. Yeah, mayhem. <laughs> That's my guy. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do me uh, like let's that. Let's talk about it. All right. If he falls out of round one, there's two teams picking at the very start of the second round. This is assuming the Patriots take a quarterback. Don't do it, Betts. The Carolina Panthers. Oh God. And the Patriots. And I'm going to say in this exercise, Troy Franklin falls to the Panthers at 33. You think he can he can like I quit beat Terrence Marshall? I quit on the depth chart. <laughs> this show. Wait, so so he's going to the Panthers? Is that what you said? Thirty third overall to the Panthers. Oh, it's good draft capital. It's uh, it's a landing spot that is good depth chart wise. You're competing with Old Man Thielen. I'm not a Deontay believer Johnson. in Bryce Young. Uh, so let me look here at my rankings and see where else I would go. Um, cause I, I don't like that. I, I really don't like that landing spot. I, w I want him to have low end round one capital where he's got a good quarterback versus high end round two capital, which is just worse generically. And he's got a bad There's quarterback. There's no way you could take him at one Oh nine. If you went there. No, I, I, I agree, which means I am going to end up taking a guy that I think Just is more it. and more <laughs> a lock for the first round. I think Lad McConkey is going in the first oh, round. Cool. There's a lot of um, yellow flags in his production profile in the analytics. There are also very easy, understandable reasons why those analytics are the way they are. And if you have the context for it, you know, people are like, oh, he never broke out because a breakout is an arbitrary number of 20% and he got 19.9. It's like, okay, yeah, he did. Uh, oh, his production is not that good. Well, he was sitting in the fourth quarter because they were blowing everybody out. He's a wide receiver. Um, and he dealt with injuries. But when you watch the film, he's outstanding. I think he does go in the back half of the first round. So I will be drafting Lad McConkey. Interesting. What's wild Interesting be is that like one pick in the NFL draft, right? The Chiefs or the Panthers? assuming no teams trade out or trade in or whatever, is going to decide so much value in rookie drafts. For sure. I So, and just talking about McConkey here, because we're almost at the end of the first round, like, he could go at the end of the second. Yes. And, and that would scare me 
for a player that fantasy, like I like him better in the NFL than I do for fantasy. That's, that's kind of my underlying feeling the whole time. Like watching the film, you know, the advanced analytics against zone. Great. I need more routes, all this stuff. And then I'm like, is this still going to be monster fantasy production or is he just going to be a really good NFL player that helps teams at the end of the day? You're just like, "Ah, maybe I got some wide receiver, you know, three type seasons. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just, I'm scared of Ladd McConkey. I, I, I could see him just being a okay NFL player. 100%. Um, he could end up being, uh, you know, a Tyler Boyd type where he's just, he's a solid guy. He's just not great for fantasy. And this is, you know, this isn't who's going to be a good eight year NFL veteran wide receiver. This is who's going to score me the most fantasy points. So I, there, there are a lot of ways that Ladd can disappoint. Um, if the Bills don't trade up, this is who I project that they actually draft. And if the Bills draft Ladd McConkey, where they're sitting at the end of round one, I think people will uh, be thirsty to drink of Ladd McConkey. <laughs> as, as everyone does say yeah. with Ladd. <laughs> That's the phrase. Uh, so I would just normally just take Troy Franklin here because I, I definitely uh, drink in the, the Troy Franklin uh, Kool-Aid. I, I'm a fan. But... I, I do worry that he's going to get some like mid second round draft capital. If I was on the board and this was the first player drafted at this position in the second round, I would take Trey Benson here. Now mm. I understand that he, we don't know that he could be the third draft or whatever, but if he went, I don't know, top 45, I think he has a case that he needs to be at the end of the first round. And I think you'd be excited if he was a charger. I think you'd be excited if he was a cowboy. I know you guys would want to take him here. So the, wherever the, those are the two spots, the uh the Chargers in the second Raiders round at, thir- at thirty seven and the Cowboys at fifty six, where if those if thirty seven or fifty six equals R B, then that that's the that pick is going to be pro- maybe even above where we are right now. Like I would have taken him over Lad McConkey if I knew that at 37, Trey Benson went to the Chargers, or 56, he went to the Cowboys. I would take him over, lad. Yes, I, I have him. I put him in the range as high as 107. If I knew he was one of those scenarios, you could definitely say that that makes sense if he's going to the Cowboys. So um, it's kind of a, a pick, uh, like a placeholder for now, um, where I think we can all see these scenarios where he's not the first. But uh, yeah, Trey Benson at 110. He's going to land somewhere around here, but if he ends up the third running back, He's somewhere in the mid second round of this draft. So who knows? What I'm worried about with this running back class in general is like they still go to a pretty good landing spot, but it's like the third or fourth round. And you're like, "Uh, do we chase it? Do we not? Like the draft capital might not be there, that kind of thing. So uh, this running back class is going to be wild. But the Cowboys are meeting with like literally every running back in this class. So I do think they're taking one. Um, We'll see. I don't see, I, I do not see a world where. They don't draft a running back by fifty six. I they Cowboys Dallas. the Cowboys the, the yeah. Dallas is drafting a running back at fifty six or trading up from fifty six to get a running back. Or I will be just blown away. And whoever that is, like I feel like you could pencil this pick in, or even my previous pick where Lad was as Cowboys rookie running back. <laughs> like whoever that is, I don't like Blake Corum, Blake Borum. You know he's like he's meh to me. But if Blake Corum went to the Cowboys here with second round draft capital, I would be taking him. Yep. All right, Betsy. Before we get to this pick, just on a side note, if you can trade away Rico Dattle right now before the NFL draft for anything meaningful, late second, early third, I mean, I'd be doing that. Already All did right. three weeks ago, brother. Yeah, it's the it's a ticking time bomb. At one eleven, I am going to take Jason's boy. I'll yeah. take Eddie Mitchell. Oh, and come I, on. <laughs> Oh, who did you think I was taking? Troy Franklin. Oh, on the on the Panthers? No way, dude. Not when AD Mitchell's right there well, on the was, Chiefs. That was my mayhem. That does that <laughs> that's not like a guarantee for the rest of is the rest of this draft now is is Troy Franklin officially a Panther? We need clarity here. Kyle, what are your thoughts? No, 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 no. No, he doesn't have to be a Panther. I, I mean, Jason, after this pick, you can take Troy Franklin. Yeah. And I'll just say wrong on AD Mitchell. Again, I'm with Jason. I don't see it, but at the late first, that's a spot where I'll embrace a little risk with a guy like this. If he is going to go in round one, which it's hard. I mean, at this point, all the signs are there that he probably will. So I will take the shot at 111. Yeah. I am I am not I am not happy here. 
because I know Kyle, and I know he wants me to take Troy Franklin to to mayhem me here and get him out of the top twelve. I I'm I'm tempted. I love Troy Franklin. I'm tempted to mayhem bets just to make sure he takes Troy Franklin. All right, I'm on the clock. Finish round one. I'm gonna take Troy Franklin. I believe in the talent. Uh, you know, at this point, after some of these other wide receivers and the number one running backs off the board, even if he was a Panther, the very top of the second round, he deserves to be a first round pick. Troy Franklin has speed and has that dog in him. I really like, uh, I, I really, really like Troy Franklin for today's NFL. He, his, you know, his yards per route run against zone against man. He's just, he's, He's just a good wide receiver, so long as Oregon isn't tricking us, which they often do. I, yeah, I'm not going to mayhem you. I love Troy Franklin. I want him to be good. I also know my heart wants it more than I think the NFL does. That's what that's what yeah, I'm scared it feel, of. It feels like that, right? It feels like the NFL is not nearly as hot and bothered about Troy Franklin as we are. Yeah, what could go wrong? That's the, yeah, that's that's the worst part of this whole process. So let's take a quick break, and then we will be back for round two. We're back. Round two. Going to start it off. Just to recap round one, it was a mayhem edition, but Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Brock Bowers, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Trey Benson, Adonai Mitchell, and Troy Franklin were the first 12 picks. And I have the first pick of the second round. I'm going back and forth here. I don't have a wide receiver sitting here that I'm chomping at the bit to get at the 201. Maybe you do. Maybe Jason wants to talk about his boy Leggett in a second. But for me, it's between a running back that is actually my favorite running back in the class. Don't know how teams will respond. I would take Jonathan Brooks here. And let, I don't know. Let's just say he goes to the Cowboys. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he could. I mean, he re he really could. The, the Cowboys... Um surgeon is the guy that did uh Jonathan Brooks surgery so if they if they draft him then they're confident in the the he's health He's going higher than this, right? He's going like you said at the 107 to 8 range. If he goes to the Cowboys absolutely. Yeah. So my worry is the downside case is Jonathan Brooks goes to a team where we don't see the path right away. He's a committee back and he's more of like a okay, I could see year 2, year 3, but I think he's really really good. I love I love his feet. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you're allowed to say yeah. that. You can I love this. I love this be guy's a Rex feet. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm just like Rex Ryan with my feet thing. Uh, Me, we're the same person. Me and Rex Ryan, totally. He um, right now, Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks are are tied in the in the DraftKings sportsbook, or at least last I saw, it's it shifted around. But they were both kind of the same uh, favorite to be the first running back selected. There are plenty of two-round mock drafts that do not have a running back going in the second. I I would be surprised if that actually happens. And the only way a running back is being selected in the second is not to be a committee back. You know, it's it's a team that has a need. So if I, I think Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson, I think they come out of the NFL draft both with like they're they're going to be f probably first round um, single quarterback draft picks. We usually don't get running backs in rookie drafts, at least in one quarterback leagues, where you get a perceived value back of the first, early second. Like usually like everyone, they get pushed up. Mm -hmm. And these guys probably will, but it's like there is some value this year. I know the class is down, but I would be very excited if I was a competing team with the end of the first round pick and I could get a starting running back for Dynasty. That's a wild thing. That doesn't happen that often. So, Betts, you're at the 202. Man, there's some tough decisions to make here. I see the ceiling case for someone like Leggett or Keon Coleman. But sometimes I think we overrate like chasing that ceiling. But like I think I'm going to get a starter in the NFL for years in Roman Wilson. So I'm going to take Roman Wilson here with this pick at the 202, which I feel like might be early in consensus, but I really like the player. I I can't. Oh, there it is. If you didn't, did I was going to, so now I'm curious. I, the, the problem with Roman Wilson, you don't know this, but I do, is that he didn't he didn't get picked in the second round, Bets. Like oh, he didn't on. he didn't make it. Yeah, no, he's he was a good college player. I actually think he'll be a good fine NFL player. 
I think we, we use the like Tyler Boydian phrase of like, this guy's going to be, you know, in the league for a while competitor, but it's just the NFL didn't see that bets. They thought he's more of a third round guy. So who would you be taking here instead? Well, the issue is that the NFL knows he's got that dog. And so he's going in the second round. <laughs> um, I would, if that actually happened, if he did fall to round three, it definitely gives you less confidence because the production truthfully isn't great, but it's like a Michigan offense issue too. So if that happened, I probably would pivot and I would consider Drake May at the 202. So I'll take Drake May, who seemingly is going to go in the top five of the NFL draft. And as I talked about at the top of the show, I still really like, despite the fact that people seem to be kind of souring on him a little in the NFL draft community, but I like Drake May, the prospect. Good pick. He was next on my board. Yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset at you, Kyle, because I had a plan there. I was ready. I was looking for where I was going to slot him in. I was ready to hit that mayhem button for bets. And I was going to do it a little different. Okay. I was going to say Xavier Leggett goes 37 to the Chargers. Super high second round draft pick to Justin Herbert in a position and a place where he, they, they have needs. So I'm curious if so Roman Wilson's still in the second. I didn't I wouldn't have made him drop. I would have had Xavier Wilson just have really good draft capital or or uh, and Leggett have good draft capital and right. uh quarterback play and then I was hoping you would pivot, but either way, I get Drake May here. And unfortunately, now you've taken Drake May. So, I'll take Xavier Leggett. I'll do what <laughs> um I am advising most people to avoid. Um, which is picking Xavier Leggett. We have no examples in history of a fifth-year breakout ever working. Uh, honestly, I don't know if we've ever got – do we have any examples of a fifth-year breakout? It's not like, oh, a fifth-year breakout that's drafted never works. It's like I don't think there's been a fifth-year breakout in the history of humanity. I think we have to add a new tab to the spreadsheet because <laughs> it's like with COVID and everything else, like we just don't have players that – are like this. So I would have thought about Mayheming, but the Mayhem is already built into this player. Like he <laughs> yeah, could he, he, he is, is no idea. <laughs> yeah, so I'll I'll take Xavier Leggett. Hope he uh has a good uh, you know, second round draft capital and ends up with a good quarterback and a bad depth chart. Oh man. Okay. So I'm at the 204 here. If there's a uh, I I've been talking about running backs. I usually don't, but uh, my last couple of picks have been Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, and then the third running back, whoever is drafted, is on my radar here, okay? There's another wide receiver that I think has a high range of outcomes too that I, I'm pretty sure these guys don't like. So it's kind of team dependent for me right now. I'm going to say, I'm going to take Jalen Wright here. It's between him or Braylon Allen that I think are going to be the third running back. So I will take Jalen Wright, and I don't know if you guys know this, he went to the Chargers in uh, in this draft, so no, I'm really excited button. about it. No, he didn't. Oh, dang it, dang it. Mayhem. Jalen Wright was actually taken in the NFL draft after both Braylon Allen and Blake Corum. He fell dang into it. the fourth round, Kyle, so... Oh, a fourth round, day three! Yikes! Uh, okay, so the NFL apparently didn't love it, didn't love the tape, Oh man, I, I felt so good when I've been prospecting Jalen Wright. It's been a slow burn. I've liked what I've seen. And then I was like, I think I've got a really good fit that no one else is talking about. Felt really good about it. Who's that? It's fine. No, I went, I, I think he would fit with the Chargers. He's a different back than Gus Edwards. He has a lot of the same Greg Roman gap stuff that he was good at in Tennessee. So I'm trying to find some Greg Roman dudes. So uh, obviously it's not Jalen Wright here. Then I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to swing for the fences here and you're going to hate it, but I'm going to take Keon Coleman here mm, because, okay. because so there's a lot that we've kind of poked holes. When we did Keon Coleman's profile that week on the podcast, I feel like we weren't very nice. No. And it well, because there's a lot of red flags when you look at targets per outrun, yards per outrun, what he did against zone and that he just vanishes sometimes, but Keon Coleman actually has pretty good hands for a guy that seems more boom bust. I like his hands. He's a big dude and got to give some props to Matt Harmon. Um, he he kind of talked recently about if he's used as a big slot player, it could work. And 
Matt Harmon's done reception perception for a long time. He used to do it for our site. I used to edit all of his articles. And I remember he started talking about this with Juju. That like, I don't see how Juju could work in the NFL unless he's used as a big slot. And it worked in the NFL where he kind of transitioned as the big slot wide receiver. For a year. If Keon, for a couple years, two years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then, yeah, to, to with, the degree where he was the 101 startup dynasty pick for a year. Yep. Uh, so if Keon Coleman gets early second round draft capital on a creative team, I think there's routes where he can work. Now, I see the downside case, but uh, among the wide receivers, I would take him ahead of Leggett, and I think I'd take him ahead of Roman Wilson. So, whatever, guys. Eat okay. that. All so, right. whatever. Kyle, you're up, you're Betts. So, you're a funny man. Um, I'm going to take the guy I was going to take with my last pick, and I'm going to take Roman Wilson. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, Come on, God. man. Mayhem. I mean, you might. You might take him. But I don't know if you know this. Pretty big deal. On draft day, the Cincinnati Bengals trade T. Higgins to the Buffalo Bills, and they end up drafting Ricky Pearsall to be the wide receiver, too, with Joe Burrow. You love Ricky Pearsall. I do love Ricky Pearsall. You know who else does? The Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> that so, scenario would be so fun. T. Higgins in so, Buffalo? Oh, yeah. my goodness. But um, more importantly... I would, I would take Ricky Pearsall in that situation because I think he's pretty close to Roman as a prospect. Now, normally, super old prospect wide receivers, like I'm not a huge fan of, but like you look at any like top 50 big board, he he's on there, like in the NFL draft circles. So I think he does go round two. Um, that's hard to pass up if that is the, the landing spot with Joe Burrow. I, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. So, I have some bias against Ricky Pearsall. Okay, talk about him because I I don't think we, I don't remember us talking he's about old. Pearsall that much. He's is he twenty? Is yes, he twenty four? Jason, you brought him up as as somebody we talked about at the end of the show and just said, "Hey, I, I kind of like the overall tape. What I'm seeing, I think he can work in the NFL." Okay, I'm gonna say it, and I I have been wrong on this. This is nothing to do with football. So just 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 okay. punch me yeah, in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Let's boy, here we go. He thinks he's the coolest guy in the room. I don't like those kind of guys. <laughs> no, that's fine. There there are definitely some like Kadarius Tony um, vibes. Not not even a film thing, but just like a yeah, like a dude thing. I I get it. I totally get what you're saying. But um, his tape is good. His route running is good. His athleticism is good, and his hands are great. His hands are outstanding. He has probably the best catch I've ever seen in my life right. um, for, a, for a single catch. Uh, so, yeah, congrats on uh, getting your Cincinnati Bengal, uh, Ricky Pearsall. Just an like interesting pick. career because he, he, was, he was there at Arizona State with Jane yeah. Daniels and Brandon Ayuk yeah. and all these other and players. And they all sucked together. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know. All right, so who would you take there, Betts? Yeah, I would take he Pearsall. He did. He took Pearsall. So oh, I, you act! I was so shocked. You thought that I was, was joking. Even, he didn't even make my top twenty-four. Yeah, well, there what? you go. Well, but if he was a, let me ask you, uh, Kyle, you're on the clock here, and if that situation happened, where you have a second round pick used on Pearsall to go to the Bengals with Burrow as the two, because T Higgins is gone, obviously very specific. I, 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 I don't know. It, it's not an unrealistic outcome that T Higgins is traded on di on draft day. And if that is done, they will replace him with a wide receiver. A good right? wide receiver. A good yeah. wide receiver. So maybe it'll be Rowan Wilson. Maybe it'll be Ricky Pearsall. Maybe it'll be uh, wh whoever. Um, but if it was Ricky Pearsall and you were on the clock with who's available here, he wasn't in your top 24 before, would that landing spot completely shift a yes. player that you don't like? For sure. Yeah. No, I, I mean, part of me just wants to log out because I could, I, my brain would break if that <laughs> happened. But um, no, he, he deserves to be in this range of, if that's the team he's with, the situation. All right. Um, I'm on the clock. I'm looking at a running back. Um, I, I think the wide receivers here are, there, there's still a handful of really good ones left, but tons of question marks and flags. I like Jalen Wright. I like Blake Corum, but I've got them both right now behind, and these guys will be dictated by the NFL draft. I'm going to go Braylon Allen. I'm going to go with the little bitty baby boy, 20.2 years old only right now, uh, a pile pusher, a goal line guy, and he's got pretty good hands. It, it's He's so funny to me in the receiving game because he has really, really good hands, but he's, not a, hands. But he's not a fluid pass catcher. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's like 
they used him a lot this last year in the passing game, and he'd 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 roll out, they'd throw him the ball, he'd get it every time, and then it'd be tackled right there where he caught the ball. It's like it, it's just a little funny to me. But uh, unless there's mayhem, I'll take Braylon Allen. Yeah, I he he's gonna be somewhere in this range. But like we I mentioned earlier, who knows? Um, you know, with Dallas, he'd obviously go higher. Uh, I would take Jalen Wright next. I tried to take him earlier. Apparently, the Chargers don't want him. But you know, if he's if he's getting day three draft capital or not day three, day two draft capital, round two, round three kind of guy, then he's probably in this range. He's super interesting. Like I I think he can be an actual like lead back in the NFL. So um, I will take him here. And I believe I know I still have a mayhem left. So I, do not. I will definitely be. Okay. Is so your will, may, who who's your mayhem left for? I don't I haven't tracked it. I, I'm pretty sure I did it on uh, bets. Yeah. And so okay. So uh, you still have mayhem. One mayhem left for me. Someone listen to the show like you guys are idiots. You don't even know what's going on in your own show. <laughs> yes, that's Accurate. how it works. <laughs> All right. So um, yes, I will take Jalen right here and bets or yeah, bets you're up and I still have a mayhem. For the third time in a row. I'm going to take Roman Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. You got your guy. Finally. Oh man. <laughs> we we can't that's, apparently that's my it. guy. <laughs> Third, dude, I love. I love Roman Wilson. I I think his his toughness, his speed and his hands. I I think he's got the second best hands in this draft and he's fast and he's just he, he's he's unafraid. Uh I like I like his story as a person, which I I do care about like there are things that are outside of film and outside of analytics that sometimes can move the, the needle when you learn things about a guy, either good or bad, um, off the field stuff. And I just, re- I just really like Roman Wilson. Plus, I like the guy who is the talk of town at the Senior Bowl. Every year, there is a guy who just like everyone leaving the senior bowl says, oh man, Debo Samuel was so good. Oh man, Cooper Cup was so good. This year, there's no question. There's a couple of guys that stood out, but it was Roman Wilson. He was the guy that dominated the senior bowl talk every day. Everyone you saw on Twitter was just like, well, another great day for Roman Wilson. So yeah, I'm 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 personally way in on Roman Wilson. Yeah, and with senior bowl stuff, I, I think we talked about this right after it happened. It's like with wide receivers, it matters with other positions. Eh, you know, there's a lot of stuff they just have to write, especially about running backs. So, um, Jason, two Oh nine, you were up two Oh nine. Um, I, I like this guy better than Adonai Mitchell, who, uh, was drafted way too high, probably both in the NFL draft and in our uh, draft. I'm going to take Devontae Walker wide receiver, North Carolina. You are, you're taking him. I am. Am no, I allowed? Take him. Okay. Yeah, you right, can take there him. There we go. <laughs> he is, uh, I've taken him in a couple of our mock drafts, and every single time I'm like, okay, I could see it. He ran fast enough at the combine, and yet I also could see him being a day three guy. So I'm not going to mayhem you, but man, like Devontae Wa- Devontae's Walker is one of those players that we might not even be talking about in three or four years. We were like, mm-hmm. oh, it's been a second round pick. So I see the upside case. I see the downside case. I just, I just see him. It's, it's ironic because I see him very, very similar to me to Adonai Mitchell. They both have the same yellowish flags, um, and they both have the same kind of uh, wh- where they win. And he's the Walmart, Walmart Adonai Mitchell. I think he's at least the Sam's Club Adonai. I, I think he's just. Oh, I like Sam's Club. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. I think Adam <laughs> okay. Mitchell might be the Walmart, but he's you know in the same family uh, owned uh, business tree. The problem is one of these guys is going to cost you so much, both in the NFL draft and in your rookie drafts, and the other guy could be a value. Okay, I'm at the two ten. It's my last pick in this exercise, and I'm deciding between two guys. It is either JJ McCarthy or. If I had to take the next tight end off the board, I would take Ben Sennett, the senator. Ooh. Oh, the senator. He's getting some love now. Do you see that? Oh, NFL yeah. draft? He big, might be TN, big, uh, TE2. The, trust me, the senator has been there all along. Everyone's just finding out now. Love love the senator. But I think if J.J. McCarthy gets top 10 draft capital, he belongs in this range. If he goes to the Vikings, I would be 
be pretty excited. So I think I would take team dependent, but JJ McCarthy feels like a safe pick, especially if he goes there. I think fantasy wise, the ceiling might be hard to envision. Like I, I said, he's like Alex Smith, which some people might not like, but Alex Smith went 101 in that draft and had some serviceable years. I think McCarthy has a potential for, you know, better systems than the one Alex Smith was in. So JJ McCarthy, uh, 210. Oh, this pick is not fun. There's not really anyone that I'm excited to tell you that this is who you should target and this is who you should take. But I will follow what I think the NFL draft will do, and I will take Blake Corum with this pick, which you can tell by my voice I'm not excited about. In the event he goes to a good situation. I am with Jason and I think with Kyle too that I'm not a huge fan of the prospect generally. He's a little undersized, which is concerning. Um and coming off of, you know, that knee issue from two years ago, people are questioning was last year like just a result of that? Is that now who he is? So I don't know. But when I watched him last year, I wasn't a huge fan. So I'll take him at the back of the second. Feels like that risk is kind of baked in. We're all pretty down on him, but Jason, what's the high? Like let's say he goes to Dallas. Yeah. How if, high would he go? If if he was if he goes to Dallas as the first running back off the board, um, which means that no one went to the Chargers at thirty seven, then you're talking about Blake Corum being I I would be willing to look at him at man, if he was a second round pick by the Cowboys, I think he'd be in the con as the as the first running back, he'd be in the conversation at one oh four. Um, which is, is really, really high. I don't think which I would you hate, I hate, I would hate that. Um, but uh, you know, whoever goes there, like I, lo- I love Trey Benson. If Trey Benson went there, I would take him one Oh four. Jonathan Brooks goes there. He's in the conversation at one Oh four. If Blake Corum goes there, he's in the conversation, but I'm pretty much going to take Brian Thomas. That's kind of how I, I see that, but he's right in the, the middle of the first round. If, uh, Cowboys take, one of these running backs and and the Chargers don't, that's going to really push someone up. Um, now I'm up with the final pick here. There's a handful of running backs that, it, like, there's things I like in a lot of them and things I don't like in a lot of them, and the NFL draft cap- capital is going to dictate it. Like, Ray Davis, I like the tape. I like the production. He's 45 years old. He's He would be the – he's literally 24 right now before the NFL draft. He played for three colleges. That's just insanely old to me. Like to to, that is a red flag. But I like just about everything else. I don't I don't have knocks on him other than this one thing of just he's really old, and so that feels like well then I should just draft him. Will Shipley, yeah, has a lot to like. He's twenty one. He was the number one recruit in the nation according to some scouting profiles going into college. Played well for Clemson. You got no problems there. Some people really love Audric Estime. And he it, he could surprise being a bigger, strong, young back. He could end up with more draft capital than we think. I didn't love his tape. Um, he seemed so slow to me. Uh, but he could really explode. Maybe a good pass-catching running back in Bucky Irvin lands at the perfect spot. There's a lot of different ways you could go there. Um, so, uh, and then a, a wide receiver, you got Jalen Polk and Jermaine Burton and a couple of guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the running backs. And this is really just a question of which name do I want to get into our draft? And which name do I think Kyle (laughs) does or does not want in? So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if he uses his mayhem or if we leave a mayhem on the board. I'm going to take Will Shipley. Yeah. Okay. Okay, So Jason's playing the game here Uh uh because he thinks he knows what what I'm thinking. Yes, that's right. And I would have taken Will Shipley here. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. Okay. But the problem is none of the running backs remaining are st- are taken. All right? None of them are taken on day three. I was going to go really On day far. two. No. The, 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 I mean, sorry. None of them are taken <laughs> yeah. on day three, rounds four yeah. through seven. I was seven. like, ooh, wow. That's they a don't even call. make it to the draft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, none of them are taken on day two. So, Jason, mm. there's no running back available on the board. Yeah, that's def- no- that's this is a good practice. I uh, so here's what I wanted. I wanted to take Ray Davis and I thought you don't want me to take Ray Davis cuz you hate old players. Yeah. And I thought I'll take Will Shipley. You'll tell me something bad about Will Shipley and then I'll take Ray Davis. I love Will Shipley. But you've actually done a really good and valuable thing uh as as a practice 
because it's very realistic that all the remaining running backs, I mean, it's not just realistic, it's probable that none of those running backs go on day two, the, the ones that are remaining. In which case, if they're the fourth round pick and they land at a good spot, maybe you get a little excited about Shipley. Or Zach Evans in the seventh. Yeah, it, they are. It, but those guys are pushed up in drafts because running backs are so valuable for fantasy to a place that is not appropriate usually, not valuable for the pick. So at this point, I would 100% switch to wide receiver. Um, and I'm just going to go off my current rankings, even though I don't mm, – I'm going to change my ranking and take the guy I want. I'm, I'm going to take Jalen Polk. Um, I think he's the next best – wide receiver here. He's got some things I don't like, but I do love his production profile. He's been a valuable wide receiver and I think he'll be, I think he'll work in the NFL. I, I do worry about his upside for fantasy. Seems kind of like a probably an, a slot guy in the NFL that, you know, is again, kind of comp to Tyler Boyd where you, you're going to have some games throughout the career where you can plug him in and you can get something for him. But I don't think he's going to be a superstar, but we're at the back of the second, and most of these picks probably aren't going to work out anyways. So I will I will uh, finish with Jalen Polk. That's where he's landed in a lot of our mock drafts we've done before. It's kind of this fringe second round. Maybe he drops in the third round. Betts, would you have taken Jermaine Burton? I think I'd still probably take Jalen Polk. I do like Burton as a sleeper in this class. Him and Jalen McMillan actually are like two guys that continue, like they continually get round three NFL draft buzz, which means they should be on your radar as a sleeper. Um, but I think I, I would still take Jalen Polk. Yeah. Yeah. So I will post these on the website, our first and second round picks. And once again, all of the rookie rankings are there in the Dynasty Pass part of the UDK Plus. You can go to udkplus.com and be a part of that. Next week, we'll be talking more NFL draft. Can't wait to hang out and check us out on NFL Plus on NFL Draft Day. We'll see you again later. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast. If you want to take your dynasty skills to the next level, check out the fantasyfootballers.com.